This is the CSU Pueblo University Library Quick Class on how to select sources. So why is this worth knowing? Well, there's a lot of information out there, but it's important to remember that different sources are better for different things. Once you understand which ones are the most useful, you'll be able to save some time while still finding good stuff. The point of this class is not to cover every kind of source in detail. It's just to summarize some of the most common formats you might come across. Specifically, books, articles, and websites. First, books. Books are great because they pack a lot of information into one package, so if you're new to a topic, reading a book about it is going to help a lot. Books generally fall into two categories. They're either fiction or nonfiction. Fiction is nice if you're looking for something fun to read, but it's usually not used in research outside of English classes. For research, you're much more likely to use nonfiction books. When looking for the most reliable source on a topic, it's helpful to use something published by either a university press or a professional organization. If they were willing to put their name on the book, it's probably a pretty good source. When it comes to searching for books, you'll want to use the library catalog. This used to be an old wooden cabinet with cards in it, but these days it's an online search tool that finds print books available in our local library, as well as electronic books which you can read and download from anywhere. You'll just need to use your e-account username and password. Of course, the issue with books is that they're long. It takes a long time to publish them and a long time to read them, so lots of research uses articles instead. Articles are nice because they're shorter, but they won't give you as much background information, so if you don't already know a lot about a topic, they can be confusing. There are lots of different kinds of articles, each with their own uses depending on what you need. Magazines are helpful because they cover current events, though they aren't presenting what we call academic research. Authors have done interviews and that sort of thing, but the point of most magazines is to summarize what happened, not discover something new. Likewise, newspapers are focused more on current events than in-depth research. They also contain a lot of editorial content, which means they are presenting opinions rather than facts. Opinion articles do have their uses, just be sure you don't confuse them with objective reporting. Trade publications are very similar to magazines in the writing, but they're geared towards people working in specific professions. They're a great source to use if you want more detailed information that's a bit easier to understand. And lastly, scholarly journal articles. Scholarly articles are presenting peer-reviewed academic research. That means they were written by experts in different fields who conducted rigorous studies to discover something new. Before the articles were published, however, other experts in that field, who we call peers, double-check the paper's findings to make sure it's accurate and the best it can be. This is a slow process, however, often taking six months or more, so it's important to remember that peer-reviewed articles are not going to present the news or discuss current events. If you need a source talking about something that happened last week, use a magazine or a newspaper. Although these sources were once published in print, nearly all research with articles now happens online. You could use other web search tools, but there are also several library databases which collect these articles and make them accessible to you. Different databases specialize in different subjects, so which database you'll use depends on your topic, but all of them are accessible from off-campus. You'll just need to log in with your e-account, username, and password. Finally, websites. Websites are great because they're easy to find and can be updated very frequently. Not all websites are created in the same way, however, so it's important to consider a few things. Online encyclopedias, wikis, and question and answer sites are really helpful if you need a quick introduction to a topic or just some background information. Anybody can update them, which means they often have up-to-date facts and information, but it means they can also sometimes contain errors. Just be cautious when using these sites and try to see where they're getting their information. A good wiki will include citations to its sources, which can help you verify its accuracy. Government sites are a great place to access official laws and policies, as well as get reliable statistics. They usually end in .gov, and the agency creating the content should be clearly visible. Professional organization websites usually end in .org. They're a lot like trade publications in that they contain information geared towards people working in a specific field. If your academic discipline has professional organization associated with it, check out their webpage to learn more about what people in that field do every day. And then there's everything else on the internet. There's a lot of really helpful information out there, as well as some really weird stuff. There aren't a lot of solid rules to use when you're trying to evaluate websites, so use your best judgment, and remember you can always ask a librarian if you're not sure about something. We're pretty good at that sort of thing. And of course, websites are found using free online search tools. 
The important thing to remember here is that web search is run by advertising companies. Many companies will pay to have their websites placed higher in the results list. So don't just click the first result you see thinking it's the best one. It's worth reviewing things a little bit more. So there it is, a brief summary of some sources and where to find them. This is just an introduction though, so feel free to contact a librarian if you have any questions.